Welcome to the latest episode of Talkin' Parks, where we bring you everything going on at Murfreesboro Parks and Rec. And today we are talking to Sam Stoltz. Sam, we are so happy to have you here. And Sam is the Recreation Facility Coordinator for Richard Siegel Soccer Complex. So thank you for being here, Sam. Yeah, thanks for having me, I appreciate it. Yeah, so again, we just want everybody to know the fun people and the cool things that we have going on. And obviously the soccer complex is a huge part of all of this. Mm -hmm. How long have you been with the complex? Uh, so I've been at the soccer complex for about a year. I've been full-time with the city for two. Okay. Um, so I was just in the athletics department before as a program coordinator. Right. So, And we want to point out that you are Dr. Sam. Yes. Good for <laughs> yes, you. <I> Congrats. <laughs> Thank you. So we have several doctors in our parks and recreation mm -hmm. department. So, you know, do. yeah, it takes a lot. <laughs> okay. So we recently have the, um, the big what's it called the indoor facility mm -hmm. that is a big thing which i think is awesome yeah the indoor yeah so we have this indoor practice facility which has been awesome um it allows us to play basically in any weather um and we do our advantage programs in there and actually we just hosted this mls next cup and showcase yes and they actually did something a little different which was really awesome is they used it as a player's lounge so they had TVs up where they could play uh, FIFA on the like Xbox mm -hmm. uh, and then they had an entire area where you could kick a ball off rebounders and they would record you and give you your stats on you know how fast you kicked the ball or where you landed your touch and stuff like that so I thought that was a really unique way to use the space oh, that's cool I'd mm -hmm. like to see some pictures of that are there yeah, pictures yeah. of uh, that yeah anywhere? I can get some yeah, yeah I, I want to see <laughs> that that sounds cool well that's one of the first things that I wanted to talk about was this big event with mm -hmm. made, um, is, am I saying that right? MLS stands mm -hmm. for? Yeah, Major League Major Soccer. Major League Soccer. Um, so that's huge that came mm -hmm. here to Murfreesboro. And obviously they're not gonna come somewhere that does not have top-notch facilities. Yeah, no, they, uh, so they called back in July of 2023. Um, so this was a year long process. Uh, and funny enough, I asked them, I was like, hey, how did you, you know, how'd y'all hear about us? And they're like Google. And I was like, awesome. Really? Yeah. And we've, we've hosted some pretty large events in the past. Yes. Um, so I thought, you know, maybe they had heard through the grapevine, but no, they, they found us on Google. So thank you, Google. Yeah. I wonder uh, what they Googled. I have no idea. Big soccer complexes yeah. in the U.S. Yeah. And then uh, it helps our proximity to Nashville. Right. So they were able to, you know, use Geodis Park as well for their mm -hmm. championship matches. Yes. Um, so the, sh but the showcase was awesome. Um, so they some, I guess, just information about that. If people don't know, yes. they had uh, 438 teams. So, I mean, roughly 15 athletes on each roster. Mm -hmm. um, that's a lot of kids, <laughs> uh, a lot of very good, good soccer players. Um, a fun story from the event, <laughs> the semifinal match between two of the teams, they actually had to take uh, barricades from the parking lot and let the players get to their bus because kids wanted autographs from these really? players who were going to be professional soccer players. Wow. So, yeah. Like it was, it was a really big event and like, it was awesome. Yeah. So. And I'm learning about this too, just along with anybody who is listening. If you're not really into soccer, which a lot of people are, yeah. I'm not necessarily, I'm yeah. thankful that we have that, but just realizing just that this was a big deal, that mm -hmm. this was here. And this was, I think I heard that this was the biggest one of those kinds of events that we've had. Yes. It was the largest soccer event that we've ever hosted. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really great. They were really easy to work with. Um, I hope they come back. <laughs> yeah. Do you so, think they will come back? Is that I something? I hope so. I, you know, it, I think we're trending that way. Um, so we'll be talking hopefully here in a couple of weeks and see if we can't uh, have them come back. And everyone seemed happy. Yeah, they loved it. They, uh, they were really great. Um, they gave us uh, a lot of merch to be donated um, to like the local community and to our Advantage athletes. And they all actually signed uh, an MLS Next jersey uh, for our maintenance crew. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's up in their maintenance shop. So Awesome. Uh, they were really excited to have that. Were any of our Murfreesboro kids a part of this? No. So the, all of the teams are associated with a uh, professional soccer club. Okay. So Nashville SC would be right. our Tennessee's okay. club. Um, I believe they had three to five teams. Uh, I know for a fact that one of our um, partnerships with TSSA, his son actually plays on one of the MLS Next teams. I don't know if that team had qualified, okay. um, but I do know for a fact there could have been Murfreesboro players playing for NSC right. clubs. 
So Well, parents, if you're hearing this and think it yeah. sounds cool, <laughs> get your kid in there. I'm thinking, if I had a kid, yeah. it sounds cool. I'd want them to be somehow part of this. Um, so what surprised you about this event and just how big it was? Yeah, so I think really for me it was the buy-in um, from – all of the staff for Parks and Rec, as well as the community. Uh, I had people from Outdoor Murfreesboro and Aquatics texting me like, hey, let me know if you need anything. Let me know what y'all need. Central Maintenance sent people down um, to assist us with like trash and bathrooms and cleaning. Mm -hmm. And just that buy-in from all of Parks and Rec and then community as well, because we host a lot of soccer, you know, just through Rec and our select programs. Um, And those teams were like, hey, can we come and watch the games? Like, hey, we want to come. I know it was posted a couple times on Facebook and stuff. Does this cost money? Mm -hmm. Is there an admission price? And there wasn't, which was really awesome for them. So there were kids that we know that play rec soccer who were going to watch, you know, these soon to be hopeful professional athletes and, you know, get to see their start. So it was, it was really great um, to, to see all that come to play. So, yeah. That's that got to be exciting for you to yeah. be a part of it. I'm sure a lot of work as well. Yeah, it was a, it was a lot of work. but Because I think you're like a, well, I know you're not a staff of one, but you're yeah. over all of this and, you know, kind of coordinating a lot. Yeah, no. Um, luckily, uh, I was able to be pretty hands off as far as um, the actual tournament operations go. Right. So the tournaments who come in, they handle all of that. Uh, and then our maintenance and grounds crew, they handle the maintenance portion. Mm-hmm. Um, the staffing on our end for Broken Flags, which I'll give a shout out to uh, Rad. They did the operations side for MLS Next. Um, they were fantastic. Um, if anything happened or came up, they would call me or text me and we would get it taken care of for them. Um, so Richie, if you're listening, um, you did break about 20 flags oh my <laughs> and uh, he knows that he did that. So That's uh, amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's something that I don't, not everyone knows when we host all of these things, it's not Murfreesboro Parks and Rec mm-hmm. involved in the running of the event. Correct. Unless it's our event, obviously. Correct, but correct. We, we, it's a lot of work, though, to clean and make sure mm-hmm. the grass is cut and the restrooms are clean. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they, I don't even want to give you a number on how many trash bags they went through. I can't uh, But we did pull. So um, luckily, you know, Shane Lamb, he's in charge of, uh, he's like the ground superintendent, right? So we pulled trash bags and soap from like Barfield and from McKnight and Sportscom. Um, so they were really, everyone was buying in and, and helping us where we needed help. Because mm-hmm. uh, we were almost out of trash bags by day two. Oh my. There were a lot of people. They were here for a long time. Yeah, they were here from... Basically, uh, they got here to set up on, I think, the 9th of June, and they stopped taking everything down by probably the Wednesday after, so like the 25th or 26th. Yes. Um, so, yeah, they were here for a while. Mm-hmm. So. Well, I've been out there. I have friends that, like, for instance, my friend from Murfreesboro, her daughter was playing in, a, in one of the things here. Not that one, but mm-hmm. it was cool to come out and see a friend play on on our facilities that Mm -hmm. doesn't live here and for them to compliment how clean our facilities are and how much they love coming to Murfreesboro yeah they do the maintenance crew does a great job of keeping the facilities clean so that is one thing that they you know if we can't if we can't supply you know 14 additional fields or whatnot we can make sure that they have a good experience and make sure that it's clean and nice because for me personally, I like to go where there's a clean bathroom. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, I feel like that's pretty common. <laughs> uh, so, you know, picking up litter, cleaning restrooms, like yeah. little things that go unnoticed but are very, very important. You never know what you're going to walk into in a parks bathroom. Not Murfreesboro Parks because they're always <laughs> clean. I just mean I have been yeah, to some yeah. that scared me. Yeah. So welcome to Murfreesboro where we do not have scary bathrooms. <laughs> Correct. And they're clean. Uh, let's talk about, okay, we've talked a lot about this MLS event because, mm-hmm. you know, that's one of the biggest ones and it's very recent. Right. Um, but let's talk about some of the other parts of Seagull Park. Like we've got the playground mm-hmm. and different other areas. Like we have movies of the stars out there. Yeah. So under the stars. Yeah. Yeah. So the Seagull Park itself is encompassed by the soccer complex as well as our neighborhood park. So the neighborhood park consists of, we've got an outdoor basketball court, which I recently found out has uh, pickleball lines on it so I'm nice yeah so like basketball pickleball y'all can you know beef it out and you know use the space okay Uh, and then uh, we've got a large playground Uh, there's two sand volleyball courts uh, and then there's two kickball backstops 
Um, you can play baseball on them. There's just no dirt infield, so I just call them kickball backstops. Okay. Um, I don't know what that means. I mean, I'm thinking dodgeball. Yeah, so kickball. like, yeah, so kickball, so just baseball basically, but kicking a, yeah. uh, a dodgeball. Okay. Um, and uh, so those areas and the small, there's two small pavilions, and those are first come, first serve, free to the public. Um, they're open sunrise to 9 p.m., and, you know, we just ask you to share the space and be, you know, nice to your neighbor. So. Yeah. Well, always so much going on. Okay, so let's talk about um, Advantage Sports and Special Olympics. Yes, so Advantage is probably one of my favorite parts of my job. Um, that is the city's, um, basically our version of Special Olympics. Okay. Um, so you don't have to qualify like you would for Special Olympics. Uh, so we allow athletes of any ability to come out and play. Um, in the in August, we'll be starting flag football uh, as well as a cornhole. Um, so, the way the advantage programs work is they're one hour a week. Uh, typically, for eight weeks, they typically run the eight weeks prior to Special Olympics Tennessee's state competition, mm -hmm. uh, which we are actually hosting uh, at the complex in October, yeah. which is really awesome. Um, so we'll start those practices um, here in August and they'll practice every week and then they'll compete at state. Nice. So yeah, it's, it's really awesome. Um, and you can go online. Uh, there should be a tab on our website for Advantage Sports uh, or Michael McCafferty. He is the, uh, our special, basically our special Olympics coordinator and program coordinator. I was just gonna so, ask where people yeah, could get yeah, the, so more Michael, information. Yeah, hit up Michael. Uh, he'll be able to give you all the information that you want or could possibly need about Advantage or Special Olympics, mm -hmm. so. And so is there is there an age limit because special no. olympics there's not an age um so special there olympics to compete brackets yeah so there are brackets um we just call it like eight eight for state so you have to be at least eight years old okay. um to compete in most of the events and then by that they um and then after that they're broken down by age age group okay so uh, it really just depends on what they're running um but we will basically accept anyone who wants to come out and you know learn a skill yeah so and all that happens out there at yeah, we use the indoor yeah. facility. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really great area for, um, I want to call it my own like sensory deprivation tank, because um, you, you can't see what's going on okay. around you. Yeah. And it really helps us be able to focus more one-on-one -on -one with the athletes, as opposed to having, you know, we've got 20 outdoor fields going, and that's a lot of overload. Yeah. Um, so the indoor really allows us to, to hone in and have a good practice and uh -huh. let them, you know, play. Well. I need to come out and see the new indoor facility because I was out there before it was finished. Now, of course, okay. I've seen the outside. Yeah. Do you know that I went in a cherry picker? I did not know that. And we went above the like where the roof stops. Mm -hmm. We went above it anyway. Yeah. It was That's very really scary. High. Was did you get in there? No. <laughs> no, I have no desire. I will have to share that footage with Michael. I don't know if he wants to show it to our viewers who are watching us versus listening. But yeah, anyway, I don't know. I just yeah. thought about no, that. No, I, I have no desire to go in a cherry picker. <laughs> we will let you change the lights then yeah. when they I go don't want to go in one again because it <laughs> okay. scared me to death. It was so high and the bottom is so little. I thought it was going to tump right over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so thank you whoever did that to put in the lights at our facility. But I do want to come check out the now that it's all finished. Yeah, yeah, you should. You should come out for Advantage. It's really fun. Yeah. We're always looking for volunteers and always looking for coaches um, to assist. And I know we'll be looking for volunteers when we are hosting mm -hmm. um, Special Olympics in October. So Nice. Can you come know. out and watch the games? I would assume that they uh, love yeah, an for, audience. Yeah, for Special Olympics, mm -hmm, of course. And mm -hmm. then um, I know it. we don't typically have an audience for okay. bowling. Um, so we do bowling at the Smyrna Bowling Center gotcha. uh, in the fall. And that's for all of the schools. It's very similar to our track and field meet okay. uh, that we had in May. Um, for track and field, definitely everyone come out, bring your signs, right. bring your cowbells, bring all the noisemakers. Yes. So. Um, that's what I was thinking because they love that and like yeah, a miracle yeah, field, it's super they fun. love yeah. for people yeah, to yeah, yeah, cheer yeah. and scream. Yeah, for of them. course. Who doesn't love I know, someone to true. cheer for them? <laughs> 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 exactly. Well, let's talk about some of the things that the community might not know about, like maybe some of the hidden gems or some of the things that happen out there and at our parks that people don't realize. Yeah. So if um, so, I'll, I'm going to go back to the neighborhood park real quick because there is a part of it that I didn't mention. Um, so we actually have a nature trail, a walking path. 
um, that if you're familiar with the complex, it's in the back half by fields 12 through 15. Um, there's a paved trail to start and you'll go behind fields 15 all the way around through and then you'll come out on the side of field 12. Um, it's about, I don't know, three feet wide. Um, and it's just a nice, you know, nature trail to get in the shade <laughs> uh, and out of the sun. That's good to um, know. Yeah, so you should definitely walk the nature trail. Um, then we host uh, different events. You know, we had Splash Out uh, last month and we have Movies Under the Stars every Thursday. And uh, we actually partnered up with uh, the Rutherford County Library System. So mm -hmm. they are bringing out their mobile bookmobile. Um, they bring it out for about three to four hours. Um, it's random uh, and we're gonna set up some times for July. So that way, you know, Rutherford County residents can come in use their services right so and all that goes all that is at the public park yes yeah, so. i was at the first splash out which was at Seagull which this was year. massive it was huge and i thought <laughs> yeah. to myself this is more people than i've ever seen and i had yeah. several people come up and say this was crazy it was wonderful yeah. but there were so many people yeah so backstory on that because a lot of people don't know is that was while mls next was setting up and we actually had to stop them from going back through those fields because I mean, there were hundreds of people. Yes. I mean, you could not move, and it was awesome. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, people were a little confused because they were over at the, you know, the the main concession where the soccer area was, but they were all in their swimsuits. And I was like, I think you guys are looking for the splash out, which is that way. That but way. you might just have to park here and walk because it was just tons of people, which is really yes. great. Like that's an it awesome. Is great. I wanted to do it if I was not working. I know. And didn't have to be soaking wet for the rest of the day. I was working so. and had my video cameras, so I had to be very careful, but <laughs> yeah. I was so jealous. Yeah. But I did see the guys out there working for the MLS mm -hmm. thing and the sprinklers. I parked right where the sprinklers got all over my car that I had yeah. just washed, but it's okay. It was a free wash. It was a free An wash. An extra wash. free little rinse. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so. Let's talk about some facts and numbers mm -hmm. because we talk about all these big things going on and yes, there's traffic and there's things that people might get annoyed about, but mm -hmm. this is awesome for our community and yeah. economic impact. No, it really is. Um, so that was one thing I think I probably didn't understand before I you know, stepped into this role as well um, because Cherry Lane is tight, I get it. Leanna's tight, I come off 840 to come, to come to work, so mm -hmm. I completely understand, um, but we have, 70 club teams, so that's our travel teams, uh, that play here every season. Um, we have about 1,200 rec athletes, so that's youth and adult. Um, and then and then two UPSL teams. Um, so UPSL is United Premier Soccer League, and that's basically like a pre-pro development teams. Um, and those are just people who are here all of the time. That's not including you know the 80,000 visitors that we have for our all of the different tournaments that we host. And if you're listening or watching and are interested in those numbers, the um, Chamber of Commerce has all of that information and mm -hmm. the numbers are really cool. And I enjoy hearing them living a resident of Murfreesboro yeah. and just seeing, knowing and working for the city, how much all of this is benefiting all of us. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Especially those national tournaments that there's only two Tennessee teams. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's people coming to stay in hotels and renting cars and everything. So. Yes. We like that. I know. We do like that. <laughs> we like and that. I know the, um, <laughs> the Convention and Visitors Bureau loves that as well. Okay. So we're going to wrap this up, Sam. Okay. <laughs> and know that we have we like to end this with, because this is about learning about you as well, okay. along with our facilities. So we are going to do a little segment called Fast Five. <laughs> First, five, first fast five questions is, did you play soccer as a kid? I did. I actually played at the old soccer fields by the airport, by McKnight Park. I grew up uh, playing rec soccer there when it was Strikers, or MSC, I guess. Uh, and then I played select soccer. Um, and then I went to Oakland, and I played high school soccer at Oakland. Okay. Uh, and then I played club soccer at MTSU. Um, so big soccer fan. <laughs> I'm glad I'm learning this out. Yeah. As everyone else, I did not know yeah. that you were a college soccer player. Well, That's I didn't awesome. play. I didn't play for the university. I played for in the college. club team. Yes, but I did score because I was friends with the girls on the soccer team. I did score on the MTSU goalie um, during a scrimmage one time. So okay. I just would like to 
if you're listening, <laughs> I remember. I did not forget. <laughs> this is a perfect fit for you with all yeah. of your soccer background. Yeah, it's great. I get to watch soccer and, you know, get to enjoy seeing other kids enjoy soccer like I did. Yes. Kids love it. Well, I mean, yeah. so many. And it's getting so popular mm -hmm. with everyone. Yeah. Okay. Who is your favorite player? Mm, favorite player is probably Tobin Heath, who does not get enough credit. Um, she's very tactical and very smart. She can see the whole field. Um, I would say my current favorite player is Crystal Dunn, very versatile and does definitely does not get the credit she deserves. Um, so they're both excellent players for the U.S. Women's National Team. I'm going to look out for them now yeah. that I know some names to pay attention yes. to because yeah, yeah. I don't know any of the players. Yeah, Crystal Dunn will be is on the Olympic roster. Awesome. Um, so definitely look for her. If I buy a jersey, which I am not a jersey buyer, um, I would buy her jersey. Nice. So that's telling you something. That is telling yeah, me something. I am not a jersey buyer, but I would buy her jersey. Awesome. <laughs> that's cool. I'm excited for the Olympics coming up. And so where is your favorite place that you've ever watched a sporting event? I would say uh, my mom's a big Ikea fan, um, and we actually have a tradition of going to um, the Fiesta factory in West Virginia. Uh, and we took a impromptu trip to Ikea in Philadelphia, and the U.S. Women's National Team just happened to be playing, and we just popped in and got $10 tickets and got right on the end line, and I got a lot of great signatures and autographs, and Tobin Heath was one of them. Nice. Uh, so probably... Um, Probably that one is my best, you know, like core memory of yes. a sporting event. That so sounds so fun. Yeah, what was, a nice memory. Yeah, it was awesome. With mom. Yeah, with mom and uh, her college roommates and their friends who are, or I guess their children who are who are now my friends. Yeah. So, how fun! I love that. Do you have a favorite spot in Murfreesboro that you like to go to or that you like to hang out at? Yeah, I would probably say um, I want to say Barfield. Um, just because I actually got my start in Parks and Rec out there. Uh, Rachel Singer did my interview uh, really? for, as a shop manager in college. Uh, and then I worked out there for about a year and a half. And I actually wanted to play club soccer. And I just knew that the schedule wouldn't be conducive to play club soccer and work out there on the weekends. Uh, and I actually transferred to aquatics. Um, so I've been all over. Nice. Um, but I would say probably Barfield because um, I like hiking and they have some gr really great trails out there. Awesome. So. You didn't say um, Seagull Soccer Complex. I didn't. I'm just um, kidding. You work there, so we know you love it. I didn't. <laughs> you spend enough time there. I do. Uh, I do. So that's okay. That's okay. So last question is, is there a fun fact about you that we should know? Or do you have a special hobby or skill uh, that you want to share? My fun fact is probably that I've recently gotten into reading. Um, and I think I really did not like reading as a child because right. I didn't feel like I was very great at it. Um, so it's not too late to pick up a book True. Uh, and enjoy reading and sitting in your hammock and, you know, finding something that you enjoy doing. And for me right now, that's reading. So uh, I'm going to stick with it. Um, I, I know you've already said that I got my Ph.D. So yes. I uh, read what was required uh -huh. <laughs> through that. And then I probably didn't touch a book for probably two and a half years. Yeah. Um, so now I get to read, read for enjoyment, and that's really nice. So When you get to read for enjoyment, yeah. it's so wonderful. When yeah. you have to read for school or yeah. anything else, for me, I'm like you. It just made me not want to do it. But yeah. I love reading. Yeah, it was it was really interesting because it was even things that I, f I found I was curious about. And I was like, oh, you know, that's an interesting, you know, thing, which I guess you have to be inquisitive to want to go to school to get your Ph.D. Yes. Um, but it does not make the reading any more enjoyable. <laughs> uh, no, I can imagine. <laughs> so Your brain needed to rest. It did. It did. It needed a good two and a half year break. And I've probably read more books in the last, you know, three months than I did ever for joy. So yeah. it's been great. I love that. So, what a, yeah. That is a fun fact yeah, that you yeah. just got into it. Yeah. How did we go from MLS soccer to reading? But isn't it wonderful? <laughs> it is. It's wonderful. Hey, so. we have the bookmobile out at the, our Seagull, Seagull Soccer yeah. Complex. So that honestly fits in wonderfully. It does. I love it. Mm -hmm. It does. <laughs> and we have an, a nice shade tree. So, you know, check out a book from them, sit under a shade tree, and enjoy. So if little brother is playing soccer and you're bored, you can go sit under a tree and read your book. Yes. 
Well, Sam, thank you so much for being here and thank you for being a part of this. I was excited to learn more about you and I know our listeners and viewers are. And we want to thank you for watching us here on City TV, YouTube and Facebook. And if you're listening to us on one of the numerous podcast apps where we're included, thanks for the download and check out more great podcasts the city offers. I'm Michael Lynn White and join us next time for Talking Parks. Oh, 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 oh,